Christian very long at all, you'll know that faith is a really crucial subject in the scriptures. It's something that we're called to have. It's something that we're called to walk by. It's something that's supposed to shape the way we live our life. It's language we are all familiar with. We want to walk by faith, live by faith, keep the faith, contend for the faith. Jesus talks about having faith the size of a mustard seed that can move a mountain. But what really does that mean? Of course, faith in its simplest definition is belief, believing. If you just believe, the little Prince of Egypt song, there will be miracles if you believe. If you believe what? I think this is where things start getting a little tricky, okay? I'm supposed to be a person of faith. I'm supposed to be a person who believes stuff. You know, the verb believe kind of needs an object with it. You can't just believe. You have to believe in something. Perhaps you believe that something's going to happen. Perhaps you believe certain things are true, but your belief has to be focused on something that you can actually kind of explain and define. So when we say to one another, have faith, I want to be a person of faith, what what are we actually believing in? I think one of the most common ideas around having faith is we consider faith to be roughly the same thing as optimism. I feel like things are going to work out okay. I don't want to live in doubt. I want to live in faith. Doubt means anxiety. Doubt means worry. Doubt means always questioning, oh, what's going to happen? And faith is, I know what's going to happen. You know, and there's some validity to that. We have promises in scripture that we believe are going to come true. So there are things that we can be sure are going to happen. Jesus will come back because he said he would come back, for instance. So how do we walk in faith then in the day-to-day business of life. So for instance, I don't want to have doubt and fear concerning my finances. Can I be sure that my finances are always going to look great? You know, I don't want to be in doubt and fear about my health. Can I be sure that I'm going to walk in strength and health and pain-free for the rest of my earthly day? I know some of you who watch these videos, and I know we're from a bunch of different church backgrounds, for those among us who are familiar with kind of a more charismatic church setting, we kind of know where this is going already. We see in the New Testament where Jesus proclaims, your faith has made you well. You know, there's that verse again about faith the size of a mustard seed moving a whole mountain. So, It's easy to start thinking that faith does mean having a sure confidence in a good outcome. I have faith that I'm going to be healed. And if you can just believe hard enough that your sickness will go away, it will go away. Which can really easily lead to kind of a cyclical sense of condemnation. Because, okay, I prayed, I thought I had faith that I was going to get healed, but I'm not healed yet, and... Therefore, my faith is just clearly too weak. I need to be able to visualize myself better being able to do that thing that was too painful to do before. I need to be able to visualize myself better being able to take off my glasses and suddenly see 2020. I'm like, man, I really believed it would happen this time, but I'm still sick. And so clearly my faith, my belief that something good will happen is not strong enough. And maybe even for those of us who didn't have such a strong, charismatic setting growing up, there might still be kind of that expectation that to have faith means to have just kind of an assurance that everything's going to be okay. I don't want to be negative. I want to be positive. I don't want to be doubtful. I want to be hopeful. And so faith is just kind of this Pollyanna-ish sunny, it's going to be okay. It's a glass half full optimism that just kind of hangs over my entire Christian life and regarding my family, regarding my friends, regarding my finances, my house, all of it is like, I just need to have faith. And faith is kind of code for stop worrying. Everything's going to be fine. It's believe in a good future. The glass is half full. And 
I mean, to be fair, you know, it's a lot more pleasant internally to not walk around all the time bogged down in, oh, what if everything is going to be terrible? Like, that that's anxiety and fear, and that's not something God's called us to. But looking at faith as just a general belief that good things will happen, whether it's general good things, i.e. my life is gonna all be okay in the end, or specific good things of I am believing for XYZ to happen, is an incomplete picture of what faith is. Is. To be sure, there's a certain amount of faith that is connected to expectations of the outcomes of certain things, but it's not just because I generally believe that the universe is a kind place. It's not because, well, okay, I can't predict the future, but I can imagine really, really hard that it's going to be good. Because faith is not in and of itself something concrete. You have to be believing in something. And faith isn't just a belief in a general happy, optimistic, foggy, good attitude. Faith has to, if it's biblical, be rooted in someone. I was thinking of this recently going through the book of Daniel with uh, some interns here at IHOPKC, and we were looking at the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they are under threat of getting thrown into the fiery furnace. The king has built a great image, an idol. He's commanded all of the rulers, all of the authority figures in his kingdom to come. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are Jewish captives who are serving in his court, and they are mandated to be there, but they won't bow down to the idol. And the king is enraged about this. He's mad. He's not having it. And he has issued the decree that if you won't worship his idol, you're going to get thrown into this gigantic fiery furnace and be burned alive for the crime of defying the king. Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are summoned for not bowing. People see them, they tell on them, and the king brings them in, just enraged. Why won't you bow to my idol? And their answer to him really blows me away. They say, O king... We have no need to answer you in this matter. The God whom we serve is able to deliver us, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. They don't say, we think he might. They don't say, well, there is this remote possibility that perhaps. They say, he will deliver us. But then in the next sentence, they say, but if not... Let it be known that we will not worship this image. Which is initially confusing. It's like, okay, is God going to deliver you or is he not going to deliver you? Are you sure about this or do you have some question about this? And I think what they're tapping into is the recognition that God is a deliverer. That's just who he is. And King Nebuchadnezzar will go on and recognize it at the end of the chapter. There is no God who can deliver like this. God is a deliverer. He does deliver his people. He will deliver his people. I think there, if not, is connected to, okay, we don't know if that means we walk away from this encounter or if that means we go and be with him departing these earthly bodies but he will deliver us. Because either they die and they're with the Lord and they win, or they walk away from the situation unscathed and they win. But what I think is pretty safe to assume, I don't think any of them were looking into this raging inferno and going, nah, that's no big deal. Doesn't look so bad. Fire, no big deal. Fire. I have faith that I won't even feel heat. Like, the fire was intense. The guards who were assigned to throw them into the fire killed over dead. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego not only survived, they walked around in the fire with one who looked like the Son of Man. The fire burned off the ropes that were binding them, but didn't burn off any of their clothes, and they walked out of there not even smelling like smoke. I'm pretty sure none of those three boys stepped out of that furnace going, ha, <laughs> called it, because they knew it was going to go that way. Like, that is such an extravagant, bizarre, mind-blowing deliverance that nobody willed it into existence by believing hard enough that it would happen. And when they're standing up to the king, they don't say, we'll walk out of here without even being singed, just you wait and see. They said, our God will 
deliver us. When I was in IHOPU, I was taking a class from Matt Candler, and he had this illustration of faith that has really stuck with me, and it's really good, so I'm going to shamelessly steal it right now. The illustration is this. Imagine it's in the dead of winter. You're approaching a lake that's frozen over. There's a layer of ice on the top of the lake. You need to get to the other side of the lake, obviously by crossing the ice. Now, if the ice is a quarter inch thin, it does not matter how confident you are that you're going to be able to walk across it. Oh, I've walked across so many frozen lakes. This is no big deal. I, ice is strong. I don't weigh that much. Pfft. Thin ice sign doesn't matter. I know what I'm doing. I am so sure that I can do this. Kind of doesn't matter because the ice is this thin and you're going to fall through it. You're going to get wet. You can have great faith in the wrong thing, in this case, the outcome, and it doesn't change whether or not that ice is able to bear you up. On the other hand, suppose the ice is multiple feet thick, rock solid. You could drive a truck on this ice and be fine. But because, you know, maybe you're not used to living in places where lakes just freeze over and you can step on them and be okay, you can be terrified that the ice is going to give. You can be taking cautious, hesitating steps out onto that lake. You can be crawling across that lake, shaking in fear. What if the ice goes? What if the ice doesn't hold up? But they say it's going to be okay and it's really thick, so I guess it's okay. And wah, you could be freaking out that entire trip. You're not going to fall through the ice. Even though your faith in the ice is weak and faltering, that thing is so thick, it's not going to drop you. A little bit of faith in the right thing is so much more effective than all the faith in the world about the wrong thing. So when it comes to us, we want to have faith. But how do we have faith? It's not having faith in always good outcomes. Like, I don't have a biblical guarantee that my bank account is going to be overflowing tomorrow. I don't have a biblical guarantee that I can't suffer a horrible tragedy that will injure my body or kill me in a few days. You know, no matter how strongly I believe that I am invincible and rich, I am still weak and subject to all of the effects of the broken, sinful world we live in. But my faith isn't that... I can't ever get sick. My faith isn't that I will never lack for money. My faith is I know who God is. God keeps me. He is taking care of me and he works all things together for my good. Doesn't necessarily mean I'll recognize the circumstances good while I'm in it, but he brings good out of it and I can trust him to lead me well even through tragedy or loss or pain. I don't have a guarantee that my body will function at complete perfection on this side of eternity, but I do know that God is a healer, and I can have faith in him to heal me, maybe in this age and definitely in the age to come. I can't have strong enough faith that I won't have drama and pain in my circle of friendships and my relationships. But I can have faith in a God who's a comforter, a God who is a friend who sticks closer than a brother, a God who is building a church into one new man who has a plan and a purpose for a unified body of Christ. I have no guarantee that I won't suffer injustice in this age, but I can have faith that I serve a God who makes every wrong thing right. So faith isn't abstract optimism. Faith isn't a general belief that everything's going to be good. Faith is not declaring against all reality that something good specific will happen and if I just believe it hard enough, it's going to manifest in my life. Faith is, I know who's in charge of all of this and he really likes me and he listens to me and he cares about me and I can trust him to lead me through it. So there's something to chew on for this week. If you have thoughts or questions on it, I'd love to hear from you. You can leave a comment below or on the website. All of the information for contacting me is in the description on YouTube. I'm Amanda Beattie, and this has been the Interweb Assessor Channel, and I will see you next week. Bye.